In this video, I will tell you about two of my favorite equations. We will explain the context for the formula, the consequences, and what the formula is used for. Before we get started, I just wanted to quickly plug my Discord channel. It's a growing community of people who are interested in many body physics. There are chats on the videos or potentially other videos you see on YouTube. Uh, you can talk about your experiences in graduate school or ask for advice. And then there's many more uh, things that you can chat about there. So if that sounds interesting, uh, definitely check that out. The link is in the description. So the first equation is a huge ingredient uh, for the field of quantum chaos. The equation is called the Wigner surmise, and the most simple form of it takes the following form. Right away, the notation might seem uh, natural to you. You probably think it is a probability distribution, and you would be right. But before I explain what the equation is about, let's give a little bit of context. So chaos is probably something that you've heard about before. Chaos in a classical setting is a dynamical statement. The easiest way to summarize it is the following. Consider that we have two initial conditions for some system that are slightly different, say by some amount delta. And we'll make delta a function of time, so we'll put a little zero there. Then if we vary time and the dynamics are chaotic, uh, delta of t, or the difference between the two paths, exponentially diverge from each other. Lambda is a positive constant called the Lyapunov exponent that controls this exponential sensitivity to initial conditions. So what happens when we try to do something similar, but in quantum mechanics? Unfortunately, uh, a similar statement compared to the one that we just said isn't quite possible in this context. The reason for this is that the overlap between uh, two quantum states, which is a way for us to tell how different they are, is constant in time. So by this way of measuring how different two quantum states are, we see that these two quantum states are equally different for all times t. That is, the difference doesn't change between the two states. So interestingly, as physicists started studying the spectral properties of chaotic systems, it was found that random matrix theory of all things predicts statistical properties of the spectrum of the system. In particular, the findings suggest that the spectrum or the energies of chaotic Hamiltonians have level propulsion as a key feature of a chaotic Hamiltonian. So what exactly does that mean? Assume we have solved our eigenvalue problem of the Hamiltonian and we have all of the energies of our system. Then if we organize our energies from smallest to largest, then S in the probability equation that we have is the difference between neighboring energy eigenvalues. And the probability distribution for the gaps in our spectrum is given by the Wigner surmise. So what this tells us is, is that our energies have what's called level propulsion. And importantly, or equivalently, chaotic Hamiltonians will have a degeneracy in the energy spectrum with probability zero. So our next candidate equation is called the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis ANSATS. And this candidate builds off of random matrix theory that we were just talking about. It allows us to connect chaotic Hamiltonians in quantum mechanics to statistical mechanics or thermodynamics. So let's say I wanted to track some observable in my system and let's call that observable A. Let's say I went with the random matrix theory observation and investigated what an observable would be like in my system given that my Hamiltonian was indeed a random matrix. The entries of my observable in the energy eigenbasis would look like the following. So unpacking this equation, it is basically saying that if we look at our observable, our diagonal will be some constant up to small corrections, and the off diagonal will be small and randomly distributed. A bar here is related to the average entry we expect when we average over our random matrices. A bar squared is related to the variance of that. And the capital D here is the total Hilbert space size. So this will be a very, very large number. R subscript KL here is a random variable with mean zero and unit variance. Now, without diving too much into this, 
basically what we have here are entries of an observable that are independent of energy, temperature, and other thermodynamic quantities. So this description, given to us by random matrix theory, is insufficient to describe how statistical mechanics might emerge from the quantum regime. Now, interestingly, we can generalize this equation to account for energy dependence and recover what's called the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis. It is again a statement about how the observable's entries look in the energy eigenbases. So let's break down this new equation. Firstly, E bar is the average energy. Then we have the frequency omega. R again is a random variable as before. A of E bar and F of E bar and omega are smooth functions of their argument. And then S of E bar is the thermodynamic entropy. But what does this equation tell us? It means that up to small corrections, the diagonal of our matrix is a smooth function of energy and the off-diagonal elements are randomly distributed but suppressed by the thermodynamic entropy, and that is exponentially suppressed. So interestingly, this equation has been verified in a large number of many body systems. So what exactly do we get from this? Well, if you want a longer form explanation about why this would be interesting and very useful, definitely check out my two videos on the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis. They definitely spend a lot more time on this topic and explain things in more detail, but they don't explicitly state the ansatz that I'm showing you here. Basically, what we get is that assuming we start our dynamical system in some pure state, which has support on a continuous but small window of energy, then the ETH tells you that the fluctuations around equilibrium are exponentially suppressed by the thermodynamic entropy. So let's call those fluctuations sigma squared. Then we get the following formula for how the fluctuations are suppressed. It also tells us that the equilibrium value of our observable will agree with statistical mechanics, or in particular, with the microcanonical average. Going through and fully explaining all of these consequences and deriving them, probably deserves its own video, uh, but for now we are just going to state them as a natural consequence of the equation. So that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.